In season six, episode 10 of Game of Thrones, The Winds of Winter, Bran Stark sees the fight that took place at the Tower of Joy. The same story we have heard tales about from his own father, Ned Stark. But will we see that scene in the book, Winds of Winter? Currently, in A Dance of Dragons, Bran is trading with Bloodraven, and he has already had a few visions through the weirwoods that are vague and unexplained. In Winds of Winter, it's likely that in a similar fashion to the show, Bran will further his abilities and reveal secrets and provide the reader with long-sought answers to these green dreams or visions. In Season 6, one of the places we see Bran look into is the events of the Tower of Joy. Much like we have been told, Ned goes to the Tower, seeking Lyanna sometime after the Battle of the Trident and the Sack of King's Landing. Rhaegar has died, and so has the Mad King. The war is essentially over, but Ned must go find his sister, who has been kidnapped by Rhaegar and locked away in the Tower of Joy. In the show, Ned and his gang, including Howland Reed, are able to take out several Kingsguard members, including the Sword of the Morning, Arthur Dane. He goes inside the tower and sees Lyanna in a bed of blood with a baby who turns out to be Jon Snow, a.k.a. Aegon Targaryen. Lyanna dies, and Ned raises Jon as his bastard son. In the books, things could go far differently for a ton of reasons. Some of them actually book differences, but many of them possible if not highly considered fan theories, all with high levels of validity, as well as all of the possibilities that the books won't even come close to resembling the show in the end. Given the significant amounts of differences with book characters who never even make it into the show, and events that have happened to book characters happen in different positions, different cities, different towns, or just some people who end up serving as a filler role in the show and their counterparts kind of get combined. For starters, Rhaegar Targaryen might still be alive, either hiding beyond the wall, possibly as Mance Raider. It comes from a, of a fan theory that Rhaegar dies at the Ruby Ford when Robert smashes his army. It's described that rubies went flying across the battlefield, and that's how the river is renamed. We know that rubies are used to glamour, so a popular theory is that Rhaegar didn't actually even fight at the Battle of the Trident, and so he didn't die there and hasn't been living in secret since. If this is the case, it's possible that a fight doesn't even take place at the Tower of Joy. Ned and Rhaegar could meet up at the, at the tower and come to some sort of conclusion about Lyanna's situation and the John, what they were going to do with John's parentage. Ned could even force Rhaegar to go beyond the wall or take the black, and then Mance Raider's story is made up, and it's just accepted over time by the brothers of the Night's Watch. Given the power of John being Ned's nephew, he would certainly understand what could happen to him if Robert, the newly crowned king, were to ever find out, which is why Ned hides John in the first place. And of course, this is assuming that R plus L will equal J into the books, which leads into another question. Will R plus L actually equal J in the books? It certainly seems likely. This is by far the most accepted theory. It 100% happens in the show, and just about all indicators say it will. But there are still those who believe that the books could be different. After all, John is dead in the books where we leave him. There are also the belief that John could be the son of Ned Stark and Ashara Dane. And then you can go even further, and some people think that Mira Reed is also born at the Tower of Joy, being John's sister. Given her very similar age, appearance to John, and maybe Howlin' Reed took Mira up as his own, just as Ned does, and that the children are split up. A very Luke and Leia situation. After all, Howlin certainly does something there, and hopefully we will get to see it if Bran does take us there in Winds of Winter. Then there's the idea that maybe it won't be Bran that is revealing this information about what happens at the Tower of Joy to the reader. In the show, it's a combination of Bran, Sam, and Gilly who all kind of figure out what happens. But the books have far more people who could have that information than could show up and say something, or even the way the information is given could change. In the show, Sam learns it after Gilly reads it in a book, but could be somebody like John Connington who tells him. John Connington is Rhaegar's most loyal friend and is leading his presumed son to battle. It's young Griff, potentially Aegon Targaryen, the son of Rhaegar. But John Connington has contracted grayscale. 
And I think it's possible that he could be the one to go to the Citadel, not Jorah Mormont. In the show, we see Jorah Mormont go to the Citadel and he's healed by Sam. In the books, it's the other way around and you have John Connington going. Well, now you have somebody who may have information about what happened at the Tower of Joy, not Jorah Mormont, and Sam might save him in the same way. Then, of course, there's Howland Reed himself. He could make an appearance. He is talked about far more in the books than the show. Mira tells us his story at the tourney at Harrenhal, and it's likely that Howland Reed could be the one who shows up and reveals this information about what actually happened, especially if it also involves Mira. So in conclusion, I think it's highly likely we will see this scene in the books, but what happens there may be totally different and it's possible we may get it told to us in a different manner, which would mean that the brand vision, as we saw on the show, may not happen. So with that, guys, let us know, what do you think? Do you think we're going to get it in the books as well? Or do you potentially think it could be somebody else who reveals all this information?